<laughs> you get so excited you saw that camera come out and you say, oh boy, oh boy, we get to hug. But you don't care about your people out there, do you? That's all right, I do. Hi everybody, it's Robert Earl and Cascade the Wonder Dog out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas with another project. Uh, this time a little fun project. I've got a couple of days where I really don't have a lot that I get can get done so I figured I'd do a couple of things um, and one of those things is to make a trellis for my new uh, my new tropical garden in the greenhouse now we're gonna make the trellis now I'll take you back in a moment and show you the trellis we're gonna make the trellis out of sotols if you don't know what sotol is <sighs> sotol is a, a type of an agave and the best way to describe it is in terms of booze, right? You know, I'll describe everything in terms of booze. So you've got three levels of, of um, tequila. One is mezcal. That's the stuff with the worm in the bottom. It's usually the cheaper stuff. It's the stuff that, you know, people go across the border towns or kids would go uh, on their senior trip to Acapulco and drink and, you know, th think it was a great deal of fun. The next is your normal tequilas, your Jose Cuervos, um, uh, uh, that type, the normal tequilas. And the third type is the one you've never heard of. And the reason you haven't is because it takes decades to grow one of these plants so this tequila is very, very expensive, and it is called Sotol Tequila. And these are the bloom stalks off of the Sotol. Now, unlike some agaves that bloom and die, Sotols don't bloom and die. They'll bloom every year if the rainwater's right or every other year. Um, this happened to be the odd year, so not only do we get a bloom, you know, the ones that were blooming annually are going to bloom this year, but more bloomed, and the blooms are bigger and nicer. I'm using this year's blooms only to make my trellis out of because I don't know if I pick one up off the ground, I don't know if it's two years old or 37 years old because I just have no idea how long it's been sitting on the uh, desert floor. So I'm using this year's Sotols. As an added bonus to these, I have mature seed, seed pods ready to fall off that I'm going to cut off and give to the chickens so they'll get in a supplement to their diet and uh, I get to make my trellis. But before I get started, I'm going to take you back and show you what I need the trellis for. Now everyone that's trying to live off-grid or trying to live, uh, or trying to homestead, become a new homesteader, has got their own philosophy about how and why they're going to do it. Some people are very, very minimalistic. They don't have very much. Some people like us have a lot of stuff. Uh, some people, um, I don't want to say they're haphazard, they know exactly what they're doing, but they build stuff that looks kind of like the general public has been made to think by all these off-grid TV shows um, that the typical off-gridder lives, you know, and I, and, oh, I slap together with tar paper and pallets and that. So everybody's got their own philosophy. If you've followed any of my videos, and I hope you have, if you haven't, subscribe, or at least you don't get any money if you subscribe, you can just have access to the videos and new ones. Uh, but subscribe or just go and look at them and see some of the stuff we've been doing. My philosophy here is because of our age, uh, I want everything done and I want it done nicely and I want it done permanently. So I don't, I can't afford to like, like a 30 year old could do and build something that's kind of crappy and then rebuild it when I'm 40 because I'm already 66. I don't have a lot of time. 20 years I'm 86. There's no guarantees that I'll be able to get around this well uh, and do things like this well. So anyway, my philosophy is to make everything look permanent, look pretty, look nice. For me, because of our age and also because we're going to have students coming here to see things, I don't want them to see it looking trashy. So you're in my greenhouse. Now behind you, out of your sight, is the float beds where we're growing uh, produce for sale. Behind you, again, out of your sight, is my water garden. It's the upper water garden and the lower one. The lower one goes water vegetables. The upper one is simply eye candy. It's growing things like, um, uh, like lotus, which I'll eat the lotus root. But it's growing lotus. It's growing uh, water uh, poppy. Uh, I've got a um, uh, Nile palm tree. I've got several things in here, including taro, which is edible. But just for eye candy, right here where my foot is, 
Right now we have a desert watermelon growing. When that's done, we're going to move this area out and put a little patio here, a little sitting area. That's why I'm sitting on the sitting wall that we did on a planter. So I'll have my eye candy garden here, a little patio, and over here is my tropical garden. It's not very big, it's only three feet by nine feet long. And in my tropical garden, you can see I've already put my split leaf philodendrons. Uh, and I've got uh, a butterfly plant that I'm blocking, which you can't really see. And I've got a few other things, caladium, sansevieras, just not a lot of stuff because it's not a really big garden. But these, these are my favorite plants out of all the plants that I've ever grown. Split leaf philodendron. And they're a vine and they will climb and climb and climb. And uh, you have to give them a way to climb or they just end up running all over the place. So we're going to do a uh, trellis from, well, from right about this height here all the way to the roof of the greenhouse, the full width of this, to weave and, and um, well, to weave these philodendrons through, as well as a butterfly bush, butterfly plant. So that's what the trellis is for. Now let's get to work on it. Oh, camera's on and here's Cascade. Hey, pal. Okay, as I said, step one is going to be to just cut off the uh, tops that I really, they're too thin to really use. And I can't really, I don't know what the light's like. For you guys, I know that the, that we're in the shade and you got the bright sun. So about what I've got to cut off is about this much here, this top part. And I'm going to cut the top part off of each and every one of them using my father-in-law's antiquated vintage um, uh, battery-powered saw. And I'll get to work on that. And I think I'll come back and show you me feeding these to the chickens. That might be interesting. There, I'm done. I'm ready to get uh, give this um, the seed heads to the uh, chickens. But I thought I'd show you something else, a good use for sotol. You know, sotol, you could also call it desert bamboo because it's very lightweight. Now, this one right now has to dry a bit still. It's a little damp in the center. But usually it's as dry or drier than bamboo. Very, very sturdy. It has a lot of tensile strength. It will bend. Uh, and a lot, and what we do around here is we'll actually use these to make walking sticks out of, and that's what I'm going to do with this one here. I'm going to make a walking stick out of it, and I call them snake sticks because um, uh, you know I don't, I don't carry a gun. I don't believe in carrying a gun in, you know, in 50 some years of traveling the world, I've never needed a gun to defend myself against a human being. Uh, but. Animals, that's a different story. So I might run into a rattlesnake out in the bush. Well, if it's not on my property, I don't want to work, worry about it. I don't want to hurt it. So I can just take it, poof, flip it out of the out of my way. Also, a lot of times, especially now that the weather's starting to cool, they'll go out in the road in the middle of the, uh, well, at night. They'll go out in the road to get some of the heat that's radiating back from the road. Come morning, they're still laying there, and here comes the tourist. Oh, boy, snake, let's kill it. It's got to be a killer and they'll run them over. So I like to, if I see a snake in the road, I like to move it. Well, if I don't have a snake stick and it's a rattlesnake, that's kind of uh, dicey. So the snake stick keeps me out of the snake's way. I can flip it out. So we, what we do is we just sand these down, and I'll show you sanding in a minute. We sand these down uh, once they're nice and dry. Sand them down so that you don't get splinters. They'll give you a vicious splinter. And um, polyurethane, that's it. That's all you're doing. you got a wonderful walking stick. We actually can sell these um, uh, as souvenirs to people uh, just by doing just what I said, sand them off and put uh, polyurethane on. We get about 30 bucks a stick for these, and heck, I, you know, I only took what I needed today. I got about 25, maybe 30. There's like 300 more out there that I could have grabbed. So this will be my walking stick, and uh, don't have time or I'd make some for tourists. Let's go feed the chickens, though. This might be fun. <laughs> Hey, so I set you guys up in advance. I brought the little barrel in. I'm just going to call through and just put them out here and then dump the rest. Here, chick, 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 here, chick, chick, here, chick, chick, here, chick, chick, chick. And they have to elect a Mikey. Remember that old commercial for white cereal? I don't need it. I don't want to eat it. Let's give it to Mikey. He'll eat everything. Well, they're busy right now electing a Mikey. He's going to give it a taste. Once they decide they like it, they'll go on it.
I'll find out later. What they, uh, what, what they, what they don't eat, though, I'll take it and put it in my firewood pile. Now, some people would say, oh, my, why would you use this in firewood? It, 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 it's firewood, it'll burn right up. Yeah. But it's free, and it's out there in the desert. And as I said, I'm 66 years old. i got to get up three, four times in the night to pee anyway. I can take that free firewood that's all over the desert and throw it in there and uh, let it burn. So that's another another source for it. So you see what we're doing? We're getting into what our mantra, our main number one mantra is here, which is reuse, repurpose, recycle, and in doing so, we respect the earth. So you see, I found three uses for these SOTOL stones. Number one, I'm building with it. Number two, I'm feeding the seed heads to the chicken. And number three, I got firewood. That's that's the way you use the three R's. So what I've done here is I've rigged a holder on my, uh, what am I? So what I've done here is I've rigged a holder for my belt sander. That way I can use both hands as I try to knock some of the, um, uh, some of this debris off of the SOTOL stick. Most of the sticks, uh, stalks rather, are green and they aren't coming off. They won't come off that easily. Um, this one here is not quite so green. It should knock it off pretty easily. I've got 30 grit on the sander. Let's plug it in and uh, I'll show you one anyway. Well, there I've knocked as much of it off as I can. Again, it's fairly green. I'm just taking against the grain now my wire brush, knocking off the rest of what I can. This will make it a lot easier for me to work with. I'm going to re, um, repurpose um, hay baling twine to uh, put this thing together. But anyway, that's pretty much what we're going to look like. And I got, uh, gosh, I don't know how many I've got, pretty close to 30 left to do. So let me get at them. Well, folks, I got them all um, kind of sort of stripped down and ready to put together. Now, I was thinking of this while I was spending the last three and a half hours uh, sanding these down. Whenever somebody says, all I have to do is sand this, or all I have to do is plane this, you got to remember, they might be saying that just like I did, but it is one heck of a lot of work. Always have yourself ready for that tremendous amount of work. This was three and a half hours I didn't think I'd spend. So I've got them all ready. Now what I have to do is lay out, um, lay out the pattern I want to, I, I want to tie the trellis up in and then hang it. So I'm going to get that going right now. Well I had to point you into the sun unfortunately so I'm sorry I'm, I, until I edit this I won't know what it looks like. But um, it's the only way you can get a fairly clear view of this. What I've done is very simple, and, and you can see I've just created a ladder out of these um, uh, out of these so tall stalks. And that ladder just simply I've got a you know, uh, uh, top couple. I actually started at the bottom with a, with a nine footer down here tied to, tied to it, and then just every eight or nine inches I had a piece of wood, and every eight or nine inches I just went up and tied on both sides so they were level. Now what I've got then is a swinging rope ladder that we don't want. So I've taken a couple of smaller pieces of uh, SOTOL and put them in the ground and tied to it. Now what I'm also going to do now, and I'll come back after that's done, is I'm going to take these three long pieces that I have and just tie these long pieces here to hold this rope ladder. And maybe I've, I've got some uh, rebar. I might take one piece of rebar to secure right here with it. And that will give me just a real nice trellis. And it'll give me a, um, a rustic looking trellis. Now, I, I like to say rustic a lot. I do this rustic, I do not rustic. Like I did this bed here, my tropical bed, rustic. Well, all right. Full disclosure, as they like to say now. When I say rustic, it means I'm not skilled enough to make it look really professional. So it looks rustic. Anyway, let me get these up and I'll come right back. Well guys, it's finished. Wasn't a whole lot of finishing to do, just putting these three uh, verticals up just to kind of break up the look a little bit. And uh, 
I have a nice functioning trellis. Now in a few months when these philodendrons grow up and start going through here, it'll actually become, well the whole thing will be a lot more organic looking because the philodendrons will be here, the uh, but butterfly bush, there'll be some caladiums in the front. It'll actually make the whole thing look nice. But what we've done is we've taken stuff that was just out in the desert and we've actually made something rather pretty out of it. We took the so tall uh, flower stalks, which we're just going to dry up and just do nothing and lay. And I mean, these things could lay for a hundred years out in the desert without degrading. I took some yellow um, hay baling twine to tie it all together with. I wanted, uh, I thought the yellow would look kind of nice. Uh, and then a piece of rebar that I had just uh, here to kind of keep it from wanting to swivel. That's it. I got zero money invested in this thing, and I've got a really pretty trellis. Now, you don't have so tall, I'm sure, where you live, but you might have bamboo, you might have long branches off of a tree. You might have an old dead 2x4 that's got a warp or twist to it, but you can run that 2x4 sideways, three and a half inches wide, and you can make two cuts at about an inch and a quarter. You can make two cuts, and you can actually cut yourself some, some strips like this that would make the same type of thing. It's all out there if you just look. If you get yourself, if you train yourself to think outside of the box, which I hate now that they've ruined that phrase because I've always loved that phrase. But if you train yourself to think outside of the box, pretty soon thinking outside of the box becomes second nature. And if it's second nature to you, then every time you look at something, garbage, trash, anything, your mind is already thinking ahead. What can be done with it? What, what, what would I be able to do with it? And so um, you can do something like this. And I'll have more projects like that. But until then, let's end this. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas saying, see you later.